Hi folks and welcome back to the channel once again. Thank you for joining me very much. So today we're going to talk about uh, spy planes and uh, in particular the the daddy of all spy planes really the uh, in terms of its uh, longevity and uh, sort of history the U2 spy plane um, or the U2A in this particular case we have the kit here to review from AFV Club um, I recently made one of their kits, I wasn't all that in with it, but it wasn't a bad kit, it's just not quite as mm, good as I'd expected. So my fingers crossed, this time they might they might have produced something a bit more exciting. Uh, hopefully it goes together a bit better. Now it's not my kit this one, so I can't open the bags, but it's quite an interesting play in the U2, isn't it? What a, a fantastic history it's got. So, for those of you that don't know, um, the U2 um, really was a project that was started in the early 50s um, because after the Second World War the American government and the Strategic Air Command of the American Air Force did not feel comfortable with the way that they'd been caught out at Pearl Harbor. They felt that they didn't have enough intelligence about what was going on with their main potential sort of military rival uh, and clearly that was the case because they got caught napping you know. So they decided that, that we're not going to let this happen again and they wanted to have a spy plane capability very high altitude aircraft. <clears throat> now this thing would operate between 60 and 70 thousand feet altitude which is how many miles is that? Is that 13 miles? Five, five, six, six, six seven, seven miles up something like that. It's a long way up anyway. A long long way. No, it's more than that isn't it? About 15 miles up. 15 miles up thereabouts. Um, yeah about 15. That's a very very great height. Obviously it had, the pilot has to have breathe oxygen and all this kind of thing. It's a very ungainly aircraft, isn't it? But they wanted it to be very um, economical on fuel. It had to be able to glide effectively for periods um, and have a very um, uh, a sort of a low cost, uh, low maintenance aircraft uh, in relative terms, of course that could go up into the, almost into the stratosphere, getting close to the close to space and be able to take photographs of, in this case, Soviet installations. And of course, <laughs> this all went horribly wrong for them because in uh, May 1960, I think it's the first of May 1960, um, they were doing this over Chalab Chalabiansk, is it? Uh, forgive me if I've pronounced that wrong, but central Russia, central western Russia, and um, they, they made a bit of a mistake because it was the May Day uh, celebrations, of course, in Moscow. Um, I think they were taking pictures of some submarine bases or submarine construction sites and airfields and things like this. And it taken off, I think, from Turkey. And basically it was halfway through its mission. Um, but they chose the wrong day because it was the May Day celebrations. Uh, that's a big celebration in Russia. That's when they sort of celebrate... Um, it's kind of a celebration of the end of the Second World War and their freedom, uh, May Day, you know, it's the Workers' Revolution Day, I think, wasn't it, when they had the revolution. So it all, everything gets rolled into one, you know, this big sort of uh, celebration. Because of this, there was hardly any air traffic on the day, and they were easily spotted, and, and of course, they, um, the aircraft was designed, so just just give a bit of context to this, uh, designed by a guy called um, Kelly Johnson who worked for Lockheed Martin, who made the aircraft, and this is built at the famous Skunk Works in Burbank, California. And Kelly Johnson, there's some pictures of Kelly Johnson, who went on to um, develop other aircraft, which I'll talk about later. And he um, worked very closely with Francis Gary Powers, who was their most experienced test pilot, and uh, he was actually a, a combat pilot, if that's the right description, operational pilot. And, and they chose him to do this uh, There's one last run that President Eisenhower had actually sanctioned on the 1st of May 1960. And it was obviously one too many because um, he was actually over 70,000, 17,500 feet, but he was picked up easily by radar. And the Soviets at this time had just got uh, the first deliveries of their new surface to air missiles. Uh, you know, the big long one that has the fins at the front, fins at the back, quite a big missile, bigger than an aircraft. Not as big as this one, but quite a large missile. And they launched this, and I'm afraid he was hit by it, of course. Now, he survived the impact. It, it set the plane on fire, and he had to... Uh, I think he ejected, in fact, but he survived. The plane, the plane was not um, the plane was not destroyed. I think he ejected at quite low altitude. Um, and unfortunately, they captured the aircraft, and they captured him. And, of course, this became a big 
political hot potato with Khrushchev going to the United Nations and saying the Americans are spying on them and it was an act of war and it was looking very, very seriously worrying, you know. I think everybody was a bit concerned at that time. <clears throat> This is before the Cuban Missile Crisis, it's two years earlier. So this is the first big incident between Russia and America. And of course in the end, um, uh, Powers was, he was paraded and they put him in a trial, a bit of a show trial. And the guy had a bit of a tough time really. Um, I don't think he was actually tortured but he was given a bit of a rough handling quite a lot. And in the end they traded him for a, uh, a Russian spy. Uh, and I've forgotten his name, unfortunately, my memory is family. But if you watch the film, the movie, Bridge of Spies, with Tom Hanks um, and the English chap, who's the star of it, really, uh, the name has also escaped me, uh, the one that was in Dunkirk. But uh, this is a really good film, and it's about this, this guy that they trade for Gary Powers. So it's worth seeing and looking into that. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at the model. So, as I say, it's AFV Club. Um, the Dragon Lady, of course, is the nickname the Americans gave it. Let's have a look at these uh, pictures. Here yeah, we've got some, quite a lot of pictures on the box. Let's have a look at what we have here. 48 scale, code AR48112. And, yeah, you get to realise, I mean, the E2 is like a glider with a jet engine stuck in the middle of it, isn't it, really? Um, so you get a really nice profile shot here, uh, plan shot, I should say. Then you've got this, um, what do they call it, the howder, which is like a little canopy they put over the top uh, when they're preparing the aircraft and when they're after landing to keep the sun off the cockpit, to keep it cool. Detail cockpit, we've got uh, detailed gear, complete with the bay, clear bay, where you can see where the cameras are for the intelligence gathering cameras, and you can have the gear up or down. And we've got the uh, detachable pogo gears. Um, these are the wheels that drop away, of course, that enable it to have this very glider-like uh, sort of uh, design. Other side, we've got oops, we've got front shot and top shot. It's like a nicely made model, I've seen the pictures. To be fair, air brake can be selected in position open or closed, and uh, for a spy plane, what looks like a very loud colour scheme indeed to me. But anyway. There we go. Let's have a look at the actual thing then. Um, and as I say, it's not. This is not my kit, so I can't. I can't open the bags, unfortunately. But we'll have a good close look as best we can. So, that's box. Uh, yeah, Air Feed Club did this, don't they? They do adverts for all their other products. We'll, we'll worry about that for now. <coughs> so, sprues. Lots of sprues. And yeah, it's great. Um, oh, yes. Whoops, the lasers. Some big decals. And a poster of some description. Oh, yes. Now, I like that. A box art poster that comes with it. That's nice, isn't it? So you can actually frame it. I wish other model companies did that. That's what Tammy and I should do now. Because they have some beautiful, lovely artwork, don't they? We'll just pop that there for safety. And then let's get stuck in. We'll have a look at the decals first, as I usually do. Pop these out of the way, see what we've got. So decals again, can't open them. But let's get in close. Um, I'm not sure who AFV Club's decals are done by, but we might get to find out in a second. Does it say printed in no, it's prints their own, printed in Taiwan. Okay. So it's not cartograph or anybody like that, but um I have used their decals when I recently did the Scorpion. They're okay. No, no, there weren't a lot of decals on that though, so I can't on that basis of that experience. I can't pretend to be an expert because I don't think there was enough to, to go by. But you've got some, some wicked USAF stars and bar. It's all very loud, wasn't it? I mean, nowadays, the U2. I don't know if you've seen it, but nowadays it's like uh, it's like the SR-71. It's jet black and this very low heat uh, radar, you know, anti-radar paint. None of this. No, it's just a black plane. There's virtually no markings on it at all. Anyway. So they look okay, don't they? Um, yeah, they look nice. Plenty of uh, decals. I think there's two options, in fact. Very nice. Big sheet, isn't it? Now then, let's hope that the... Um, let us hope that we have nice instructions, because the previous uh, example I had, the scorpion tank, left me 
and they're disappointed and rather underwhelmed. Lots of mistakes in it, lots of spelling mistakes and, and actual mistakes where they'd forgotten to say things or said things that didn't make any sense. You've got colour call outs for Hombrol, oof, not very helpful, Hombrol, Revel, Live Colour, Good Grief. I think I think it might be showing its age because I think this is not such a new kit. Don't know if we have a date on it. Mm. Mm. Not sure. That kind of dates it though because those are definitely not the more popular paints that are used today. Um, but anyway, let's have a look what we get. So it starts off with Gary Powers' seat. <laughs> See what we've got here. There we are. So you're building up your ejection seat. Um, which looks like it's moulded in one piece pretty much. Not a huge amount to do there, just putting on some gear on the back. Uh, it's, got, it's like on a rail for an ejection seat. So you're putting the rails on, seat, uh, cushion goes in there, and that's it really. And then you go on to the uh, cockpit instrumentation and the cockpit sides, you've got your stick. And it's got a control stick that's very like uh, a bit like a World War II bomber style actually, it's a, a yoke rather than a stick really isn't it? See here? Yeah, so that's quite, uh, shows its age a little bit, as a design I mean. And then we're building up the uh, camera bay, oh okay so these are the cameras, oh look at that, that's cool. These are the spy cameras themselves, look, one, two, three of them, shooting at different angles. Um, yeah, we're getting some of this strange sort of writing we get from AFA Club. They seem to switch between English and Shinglish, if that's the right word, Chinese English. And then they sort of have strange text that suddenly spaces out for no reason. But anyway, um, the, what you're building here is like a cradle system for the cameras to operate in, uh, in the camera bay. And then you're building up your uh, nose leg, it looks like. Is it nose leg? No, main gear, I think. Main gear. Or is it? Is that the main gear? No, it can't be. That's the nose gear. Uh, well, you see, I'm forgetting that the U2 doesn't have main gear as such. It's kind of main gear, nose gear, both both things at the same time. It's kind of a little bit back from the nose, isn't it? And then it has a small wheel at the back and these little light dolly type things on the wing. So, build that up. Build up your bay. And then we are going on to the jet intake here. And you've got your ducting for your your jet engine. Pratt and Whitney, I think, isn't it? Um, then bringing in, we've got some bulkheads here for the fuselage. You're going to pop those in and one for the back to the jet pipe. Then you put your camera bay that you've just constructed. That goes in here. And you place in front of it, uh, ahead of the bulkhead, of course, goes the cockpit. It's quite a sort of unitary construction, modular construction. I quite, I quite like that, actually. As long as it all goes to, together properly, it will be all right. Then your, uh, your gear goes in, and then your, your rear gear. This is what threw me. It's almost like in reverse. You've got little wheels at the back, yeah? And your big wheels, kind of front, middle. <laughs> almost like a Harrier sort of setup, but in reverse. <laughs> And then we've got bringing the two fuselage halves together. We've got, uh, again, they don't describe anything in English, so we don't know what we've got, but it's like a pod there, isn't it? Is that a pod for electronic countermeasures or is it a field pod? I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, doesn't make it overly clear, to be honest. But anyway, then you've got your, um, your air intakes for your jet engine here going in. Then we've got the nose section and the coving in front of the uh, cockpit and your canopy and your rear coving, coving I should say. And then you've got your bay, your camera bay uh, door and with windows in it, uh, which I presume is clear. I'm pretty sure it's going to be clear part. Yeah, it's going to be clear part, yeah. And I think there are two options. I think you can have it open or closed. So I think there's... Uh, two different versions, one's completely clear, one's got the windows open. And then we have our uh, gear doors going in, and then we're off on to sticking in your doors at the back. You can have it 
Obviously, it's asking you whether you want it retracted or uh, geared down. A couple of uh, intakes and things going on there, a couple of pito heads and aerials, and then we're into the air brakes. Um, and you've got three different positions here, uh, which I presume, I don't know what presuming because it's not clear what it is. They don't make their instructions overly clear. This is the criticism I had last time. It doesn't tell you what it is, we're just left to guess. Um, is that an aerial? What is that? Do you know, I haven't got a clue. I, th I think it's a mirror. I think it's a mirror. A pilot's rear view mirror. Good grief. I, I really do. It's a mirror. How bizarre. This looks a bit agricultural. Anyway. You can obviously therefore choose your position, then you put your tail planes in, then you've got these enormous glider light wings, and you've got these uh, huge flaps and uh, ailerons going in. Uh, and they've got this serrated edge to the leading edge of the flap. I presume that's to create maximum dragon effect. Same on the other side. So you repeat that, stick both your wings together, and then you bring the tip on on the end. And they have like a downward pointing tip. Uh, it's like a, like an end fence, almost like a Formula One car has on its rear wing. And then you bring the wings in into the actual fuselage itself. Then we've got our little cover that we mentioned, our little sunshade to keep the heat off um, when the aircraft's standing. Heat and rain as well. It's like a super version of an umbrella, isn't it, really? Uh, then you've got these um, underwing, uh, I called them dollies, what did they call them? They had a word for it, didn't they? I was being ignorant. They call it pogo gears, because they look like a pogo stick, they're flexible. Pop those on underneath, pop the cover on, shows you how it should go, and then we're on to the colour callouts, really. So, very loud scheme this one, I have to say. Uh, not sure, not sure that's to my liking. I think I prefer the, yeah, the more subtle one, perhaps. The NACA, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. We do a lot of R&D work, of course, for, for NASA and people like that. And then we've got Strategic Air uh, Reconnaissance Wing at Laughlin Air Force Base, which is 1959. Again, a bit more subtle. Oh, so you've actually got five schemes? Five, I think. And then another one, another one at Laughlin. And there we are, and then you've got your um, sprue trees on the back. So, uh, it doesn't, it seems okay, I think that they could be a bit more descriptive and tell you actually what, what parts are and name them, but uh, it's not as bad as a scorpion was, which was a nasty photocopy. This is a proper colour, nice glossy uh, instruction leaflet, so I think we can forgive them for that, that seems quite good. Certainly. Uh, better than the Scorpion where it had lots of ridiculous spelling mistakes and call the talk about the Royal Army when they meant the British Army I think. Some strange stuff in that. Let's have a look at what we've got then. So here we go, we've got the wings and the flaps, the big sprue. And I think we've got the bin men coming behind me, so you have to excuse any noise you hear. And you can see the serrated edge, can you see that? That's really impressive. There we go, serrated edge, almost like a knife blade isn't it? So you've got that to try and, it's like a flow generator isn't it? It's to try and create a little bit of air disturbance, make the air hold on to it. And same on the, the inside of the flap here, you can see that they've done it all the way along. Uh, and the idea again is to create some drag and, and track the air to make sure it creates maximum turbulence to create the maximum lift when they're actually, oh my goodness there's some noise behind me, sorry about that, uh, maximum lift when they're actually um, trying to slow the plane down, they've got the flaps down obviously. Got your tail planes here all in one piece and then you've got um, ailerons uh, for the tips uh, at that end. So, it's quite a nice sprue actually, the plastic seems quite nice, it's, uh, I've done a little bit out of the bag but it does seem to have a quarter to it and a nice the moulding looks really sharp actually, you've got some lovely panel detail, if you look at these uh, if we look at these wings you can see the panel detail, there's rivets 
and frankly that is looking a lot nicer than the scorpion that I had a bit of trouble with, so that's good. Next one, what have we got? Cameras, let's see the camera pack. Okay, this is what gets the Americans into all this trouble with Gary Powers taking pictures they shouldn't be taking. <laughs> well of course they all do it don't they? Everybody does surveillance. But that's quite nice, you've got little cameras, uh, and you've also got, uh, I'm just jumping ahead here, oh, just to tell you that they have lenses for these cameras on the clear parts which we'll see in a minute which go in the end. So there's the cradle uh, into which the cameras sit underneath and then this is the actual film compartment where the film reels are kept. So that looks really good and, and the, the quality of the moulding here is superb. There's no flash that I can see. It's pin sharp. Look at some of these parts. That looks pretty good to me. Can't see anything wrong with that. Really nice moulding. Love it. Then we've got uh, another sprue, and I quite like the way that Airfield have done this. They've got one sprue for the camera parts, one sprue for the wheels and the bay uh, for the gear, all together, which is nice. Uh, so you've got your bay doors, you've got your bay itself, and your wheels all on one sprue. So that makes it nice and easy to find the parts when you're building the kit. And again, they look really nice, very sharply moulded. No flash, no flash, nothing nasty. I thought that was a resealable bag then, but it isn't. Did the, the current heat sealed it here. I was going to open it then, but no, I'm not going to because that would, uh, that would spoil it. But that's nice, again. Sharp, clear, crisp detail. And what have we got here? Now, uh, it's quite interesting. I, said, I did allude at the beginning, suggesting the kit may not be that new. Well, I'm wrong. It's, quite, it's actually quite a recent kit. Let's see, I can see it says 2018 on it. And, this, and even before I saw the date, I saw this slide moulded pilot seat. Can you see that? Now that tells you immediately with this frame it's in. That's been slide moulded to give you detail on every dimension. And not an easy thing to actually achieve for the manufacturer. And it looks almost like a resin seat. It's got that sort of beautiful three dimensional quality to it. That's really nice. So that explains why the, the parts and the instructions are much nicer than what I've come to expect from the AFV club. Because you have to be fair about these things, you know, you've got to bear in mind that um, I was criticising the Scorpion tank, well I think it was from 1994, you know, so what's that? That's 25, 27 years old. Yeah, it's quite old. So um, this is new, so this is the last two, two, two and a half years really. So this is explaining why it's quite nice, frankly. Right up there with the modern sort of moulding techniques. The quality, the cleanness of the mould is excellent. You know, you can see that there's no, no nasty flash and crud on it. Uh, or misshapen parts. Let's have a, look, a closer look at this uh, cockpit area. Yeah, which again, here you've got some fantastic detail there. All the switches. Uh, where the throttles go, throttle lever area there on the left, the reflections off it, there you go. And then you've got your cove, uh, combing in front of the cockpit just there. There we go. And then we've got this uh, <laughs> almost flying fortress style uh, yoke for the pilot to control the aircraft with, showing its age as a design a little bit. But uh, yeah, this, again, plastic feels nice, it doesn't feel too soft, it feels fairly hard plastic. Sharply, crisply moulded, very nice. And then, we've got, I'll have to zoom you out here because we've got a very big screw indeed. Here we go, this is the one that's got all of the main fuselage on it and some, again, some nice detail here. Let's get in close. We're just looking this... Uh, the well for the air brakes. You can see there that that's really nice sharp moulding. Some lovely panel line detail. We've got rivets, all very crisp, all the panels are there. And it's very evenly done, you can see underneath, he says. Underneath the, uh, the crispness of that moulding is very consistent from top to bottom. Uh, we've got these access panels here on the nose. 
all very clear. Looks lovely. And you've got your trunking for the uh, intakes, and there's no sign of any ejector pins here on the inside of the trunking. All looks pretty clean to me, so you're not going to have any problems there. In fact, they haven't got ejector pins on either <coughs> on either side, which is excellent. You've got your main front of your air intake here, uh, and it's. It's an imposing plane, isn't it? You know, it's a big beast, is this? Uh, a big tall tail. Um, and of course, you've got those huge wings that stick out of it. It seems very solidly moulded, very solidly uh, built in terms of the concept. I suspect this is going to go together okay without too many problems. He says, when he reaches for the clear parts, there they are. Now then, what do they like? Do you know what? They look very, very nice and very clear. There's a bit of distortion. And we've noticed this. This is what we noticed with the ME163B Comet from Gas Patch the other day, isn't it? Uh, this is a bit better, but still there. There's still, I'm not sure if it'll pick up on the camera, but there is a little distortion in the main part of the canopy here. It's faint though. It's nothing to get, you know, it doesn't. A non-expert wouldn't spot it, yeah? It's not really terrible. It's not that eye-catching. We're just being very critical as part of the review, really. Um, but it's better than than most, I'd say. It's, it's quite good. It's, it's better than the gas patch was, in fairness. And here we've got the instruments. So I guess there's a decal for, uh, for the instrumentation, which we didn't really notice, because it's all wrapped up. And then, of course, here we've got these... Um, the panels I mentioned, where you've got this option for uh, you can have, I think you can have the panel open showing the cameras or clothes. I think it was like a sliding cover. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, experts on U2 spy planes, feel free to comment. But uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like a sliding cover and it uh, it shows it covered or with the cameras exposed here. So they're all windows for the cameras you can see there. And that, it's got frosted glass around the outside. That's very nicely done. Very, very good. Love it. Uh, and then you've got the camera lenses I mentioned here. They are at the bottom. Those are the actual lenses for the one, two, three, four, five cameras. Uh, and that's it, really. So, actually, rather like it, actually. I, I like this much more than I thought I was going to. Uh, hadn't, um, I hadn't seen it before. Not opened the box at all before I switched the camera on, so you're seeing it as I see it. Um, really nice. I like this uh, slide moulded ejector seat. That's really well done, and the clear parts are crisp. And I can't find any fault, you know, with the way it looks. There's nothing nasty. Uh, you can never be sure until you, until you assemble it. And I say my last one with AFP was a bit was a bit grim, to be honest. It wasn't terrible. But, uh, but this is mo much more modern and right up to date, you know, state of the art model. And I have to be honest with you that, um, yeah, based on what I've just seen, I'd give that, I'd give that 9 out of 10. Uh, instructions could be better, I think that's, that's lost a point there, because it could have done better than that. And I think the instructions are a bit... Uh, pictures are good, but it's the, it's the actual writing, there's not much information uh, to help you. They could improve a lot in this area. So it's still an area they need to work on. Seems that a lot of the Chinese companies, um, Great Wall Hobby is another, I'm afraid. Uh, it's just not a strong point of theirs, uh, instructions. They need to think hard, especially after we saw this gas patch uh, from Greece, the ME163B Comet. The instructions in that were almost wing not wing standard. They were really good. Just lacking a bit of historical photos and a bit more info about the background. but. In terms of pilots and, and you know the market, but visually it gave you perfect clues and clarity about how to put the kit together, and that is still a bit lacking here. I think it's a little bit vague in places, so so it loses the mark. But nine out of ten because the moulding looks fabulous. It really look, looks great. So there we go. So it's the U2A Dragon Lady spy plane from AFV Club. Hope you'll give me at least 9 out of 10. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you are a subscriber, don't forget to ding the notification bell. Because that way, when a new one of these videos becomes available, you'll see it straight away. 
uh, and just remains for me to say to you thanks very much for watching uh, please tune in again next time and in the meantime thanks a lot look after yourselves stay safe and thanks a lot and bye for now